Okay, good afternoon everybody. We are the CYK Kung Fu School. You might have seen this lot last year or the year before, or the year before that, or even the year before that. Okay, we're going to do the bow. Uh, instructors, if you can come up the front, please. Attention. Can I bump? Wonderful. Okay, so uh, I hope you're going to enjoy today. Oh, I know you will. And I'm going to pass you over to a uh, one of my students, Stav. He is narrating a story for you today, so it'll be fantastic that you can uh, understand this story. And if you've got any questions at the end, do come and see us. Uh, we're over, over the far end, um, the Kung Fu uh, tent. So yes, I'll pass you over. Thank you very much. Once, long ago and far away in a valley at the foot of a beautiful forested mountain, there stood a village. The people of the village had lived in unchanging stability for many generations, never daring to venture beyond the valley into the world outside. It had not always been so. In years now long past, the village had been a prosperous, peaceful place, famous throughout the land as the home of a legendary school of martial artists. Kebun Safa. days were now long gone. The secret of Kung Fu had been lost long ago, and so the village had left lessened with every generation. Into this village a child was born. In time the child grew curious. The child listened to every story the elders had about the legendary martial artists. And deep in the child's heart, an ember of his chi blossomed into flame. One day the child announced that they would seek out the secret of Kung Fu and return it to the village. Many tried to discourage the child with fears of what the outside world might contain. They warned that failure was easy and success was hard, but nevertheless, the child decided to enter the wide world. Not a day had passed when the child came to a narrow pathway that wound through warm green woodland. Undaunted, the child pressed on, though the trees seemed to chatter and mock him as he walked. Soon the child realized that it was not the trees at all, but a gang of monkeys that had been following him. At a fork in the path, the monkeys descended from the trees. Adam, the monkey said.
Where are you going? The monkeys asked the child. I'm looking for the secret of Kung Fu, the child replied. Our master, the stone monkey, is sure to know the secret of Kung Fu. His palace is just down this path here. The child thanked the monkeys and headed down the path. Meanwhile, the monkeys hurried away to their master to tell them how they tricked the silly human into falling into the five element pass. Out of the, wooded, the path out of the wooded slopes was broken and steep. The child climbed all day, realizing that the elders may have been right after all. As the evening passed, the child reached a narrow ravine of grey stone, where the wind whipped the trees against the rocks. Reluctantly, the child entered, buffeted by the wind, falling against the rocks, and being struck by the singing, singing branches. The child rushed forward, only realizing it was trapped when it encountered two hunting leopards. Ben and Chloe, the shadow leopard form. Luckily though, the leopards could not agree on which one would get to eat the child. So they took to leaping around the rocks, darting in to attack each other, then speeding away. When they finally tired, the child leapt over the fire with the speed of a leopard and fled the five element pass. Golden Dragon Mountain. Beyond the pass, a white capped mountain stretched up into the sky. The child stared at the seemingly impassable height, not noticing a golden scaled serpent descending from the sky. The dragon landed before the child, shaking the ground. Rich, the dragon. The dragon demanded to know why the child approached his mountain. The child told the dragon that they were searching, searching for the secret of Kung Fu. In response, the dragon laughed a roaring shout that seemed to shake the mountain. Climb on my back, little warrior, the dragon said. And with that, the dragon flew the child over the mountain. In time, the child came to the edge of a wide, impassable lake which was racked by a terrible storm. The surface rolled with waves and rain pounded like a thousand drums upon the water. Far out in the center, the child saw the source of the storm, a raging lake spirit. Before the child had time to be amazed, a second spirit descended from the sky, settling the raging storm. Sifu and Aspen. Tai Chi. Yeah.
Right, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a, a lost boy down here, and uh, he's looking for his mum quite desperately uh, by the name of Kelly. So if you've lost your little lad, he's down there by the DJ stand. So uh, we'd appreciate if you come down and uh, collect him before he gets too distressed. Many thanks. the waters calmed and peace returned to the lake. As the waters receded, they revealed a golden boat which the child carried across the peaceful surface. On the other side of the lake, the child came to a wide chasm, so deep that its bottom was lost in shadow. And at last, the child had time to, to rest. Unbeknownst, of course, to the child, they had rested upon the warrior's bridge where Lee had been waiting. And though at first the venerable old man had seemed weak and reliant on his walking stick, he had in truth made it a part of his martial arts. The child saw how the old man had adapted and changed techniques to make them his own. After that, the child journeyed with the old man for many days, learning much with each step taken. When enough days had passed that the child could no longer remember the way home, a great gloomy forest appeared on the horizon. Eventually the child was completely lost in the trees, not even able to remember the way out. Worse still, the wind was whispering words that made the child's eyes feel tired and heavy. Yet there was another sound, the heavy swish and clang of metal, and through the trees came a swordsman swinging a saber, cutting the branches out of the way. George, the broadsword.
child followed the swordsman and together they cut their way out of the Whispering Dragon Woods, never stopping until they were far from the sound of the Whispering Wind. Following a stony path, the child then came to the fire and ice ridge, a spur of rock that passed between a raging forest fire and a freezing blizzard. The child tried to cross but found it both burning hot and frigid cold. For days the child sat until a figure began to cross from the other side. The child watched as the figure moved slowly and purposefully, balancing heat and cold, hard and soft, yin and yang. Craig, Chen style Tai Chi. the figure the child learnt how to cross the ridge and continue their quest. 